Hi, I'm Amy and this is the Babraham Institute. Over 300 people work here and many of them are trying to find out how your immune system works. The immune system army is made up of many different cell types working together. You might have heard of some. B cells, they're the ninjas, make protein weapons called antibodies. And T cells, the soldiers, sergeant majors and policemen of the immune response, coordinate attacks and kill. There are also macrophages and dendritic cells who eat invaders and alert T and B cells. But the first line of immune defence is the neutralising neutrophil. Neutrophils can sniff out the scent of infection, migrate towards it and let rip with killing chemicals called reactive oxygen species. So here we have a neutrophil searching around for bacteria. So how do they know which way to go? Have a look at this video we made, looking at the heat map of RAC activation. RAC is a protein which is a switch, it's either on or off. And as you can see here, where the red bits are, RAC is on. It's on at the front of the cell and off at the back of the cell. This gives the cell a front and a back. If people's neutrophils can't form a front and a back, they won't be able to chase bacteria and they will be much more prone to getting infections. Unlike neutrophils, B cells mount a specific immune attack to specific bacteria which is much more likely to successfully overcome an invader by producing antibodies. But first, they need help. Dendritic cells can gobble up bacteria and show bits of them, called antigens, on their cell surface. T cells have receptors on their cell surfaces. If these recognise the antigen, they produce chemical messages which excite the B cells and it's all systems go. The B cell that specifically recognises those bacteria will go forth and multiply until there are millions of cells producing antibodies that can be used to attack the infection. Here at Babraham, Anita studies B cells and the signals that turn on antibody production, but sometimes this can go wrong. When having faulty B cells can lead to a number of problems, including recurrent chest and sinus infections, and we're looking at a particular type of problem in a protein called PI3 kinase. PI3 kinase is like an on switch for B cells once they have been primed. But B cells need just the right amount of PI3 kinase. Too little and they won't make antibodies. But too much is just as bad. The cells get too switched on, too wired and are unable to make good quality antibodies. Anita is trying to figure out that switch. Doctors have discovered a group of patients who have recurrent pneumonia and in these patients the PI3K activity in their lymphocytes was too high, too active. And we're looking to use drugs now to see if we can dampen down that response in B cells so they're able to make good quality antibodies again. But how is it possible for B cells in your body to be able to respond to any bacterium, any virus, any parasite, any anything in the entire world when they've never even met them? At Babraham, Anne's trying to figure that out. B cells in our bodies make millions of different antibodies so that we're ready for anything. Any pathogen that we may encounter, our B cells can make an antibody that sticks to it. All these different antibodies are made by combining smaller building blocks. Not only are there lots of different versions to choose from, but these multiple versions can be locked together in many different combinations, giving an enormous antibody repertoire. So we know that older people are less able to respond to infection than younger people. So we're trying to find the root cause of this so that we can improve the variety of antibodies that older people make and improve their response to infection. But for most of us, when we are young and fit, this incredible ability to produce millions of different antibodies is one of the key ways that we stay healthy. In the battle for your body, it's never a lone hero. It's always a coordinated attack by the superheroes of your immune system to kill off invaders. And if you want to know more about which cells do what, come and play at the 2015 Royal Society Summer Science Exhibition.